Hi, my name is Dan White, and I am executive producer and founding partner of Filament Games. Um, I'll talk to you about the founding story for Filament Games, how everything got started. So it was myself and two other gentlemen, Alex Stone and Dan Norton, and the three of us all believed in the power of games to do something more than entertain, and specifically to teach. We felt that learning should be interactive and hands-on, whether a game or some other medium or tool, and felt like games, because it was something we were passionate about, and something we all enjoyed personally, was a great way uh, to teach people. So we looked around at the field, which at the time was mostly academic and very nascent, and we said, who else is doing really interesting and cool work here? Um, and a lot of what we found was kind of skill and drill, um, more traditional when you when you stop somebody on the street and you say, uh, what's a learning game? You know, they might point to Read or Rabbit or one of the classics, Oregon Trail. But it seemed like there was a paucity of games in the next generation with new game technology and where game design had gone in the recent years, this being 2005, 2006, um, that demonstrated the actual power of the medium and the technology applied toward learning. Uh, so we set out to change that. Um, we founded Filament in 2005 and uh, uh, up and running in 2006 with our, with our first employees. And the way that got started is that we were all tinkering on a prototype for an ocean science game. It was a game that we were all personally passionate about and excited as uh, just a, an interest value project where you play the role of a researcher on an alien planet and you're going around and you're investigating this alien ecosystem and trying to understand the ecology of, uh, of the system and how all the animals and plants relate to each other. Um, and I took this, this prototype that we had built uh, to a conference in Washington, D.C. called the Serious Games Summit. Um, and it was the last session of the very last day, and I didn't think anybody would come, but fortunately, a gentleman from the Kaufman Foundation was in attendance. And he came up to me afterwards and he said, what you're doing is really cool. The game prototype that you've built is really cool. We're about to uh, work with National Geographic's The Jason Project. Uh, to create an ecology curriculum, and you should consider applying for funding to build a game that accompanies that curriculum to take this prototype that you've built and, and align it with their curriculum. So we said, okay, um, and uh, went ahead and wrote a grant. It was the very first grant that uh, we'd ever written. And um, we had no idea how much to ask for because we were, uh, you know, I was a grad student at the time. My two partners just worked at a local e-learning organization. and. Um, we said, what the heck, let's ask for a million dollars and see what happens. So we did, and they gave it to us. Um, we used that funding in order to build out a Resilient Planet and several other games that we built with the Jason Project, now Jason Learning at that time. Um, and that was really how the, how the company got off the ground. From there, we grew very organically um, as various other organizations heard and, uh, about the work that we did and played the work that we did. Um, and came and said, can you do something similar for us? Uh, so we went on to work with organizations like iCivics, a number of different universities, um, and more recently, a lot of uh, for-profit publishers and other organizations who are actually trying to sell these products either into school or into commercial markets. So that original challenge that we set out to tackle, the idea of making high-quality games for the classroom, um, is still something we're working on to this day and, uh, and having a lot of fun at. So um, there was a recent report that was put out by the Joan Gans Cooney Center, and they surveyed a bunch of teachers. And what they found is that over half of teachers are using games on a regular basis in their classroom right now. Um, but of course, the question is, what does that mean when they say they're using games? And part of what we're trying to do at Filament is uh, improve literacy around the topic of not only what is a game, but what is a good game for the classroom, for education, what's a learning game. Um, and there's a, there's a number of beliefs we have in this area. One is we feel like a good game is something that's systems-based. A good game um, plays on higher-order thinking skills like collaboration, problem-solving, creativity, and critical thinking. Um, and these are just a couple of the characteristics that we think make for a high-quality learning game. Um, it also has to be a real game. So going back to what I said before, um, a multiple choice, series of multiple choice questions dressed up with nice production values, uh, we would not consider a game. We also don't consider gamification, where you take game-like activities and surround something that is not game-like to create an extrinsic reward structure not to be game-based learning. So that's our focus at Filament. We create game-based learning and, and more recently are focusing on creating game-based curriculum. That is to say, entire units of content that where you jump in and out of the game across different class periods and where the game is surrounded by 
um, activities, hands-on activities, discussions, uh, assessments, etc. Um, because we very strongly believe that it is the kind of the, the game plus the ecosystem around the game that makes for the effective learning experience in school. That's not necessarily necessary in, in a home environment, but in a school environment we feel like uh, all the scaffolding around the game, that's the students' peers, the teacher, the curriculum, are all there to extend the experience and learning beyond what actually happens in the game in order to make for a more robust, holistic experience. Um, and that's where we feel like the real quality learning happens. Um, we oftentimes talk about a, a phenomenon called preparation for future learning. This is out of the research work of Dan Schwartz. And he says that uh, if you position a game at the beginning of a learning experience and then go on to uh, uh, to explore the topic through other materials, whether it's a lecture or a reading, um, the student's uh, understanding of that concept area and the content within the game um, is going to be drastically higher. So we're trying to move away from this idea of games as being something that teaches in a silo to this idea that games teach as part of a broader ecosystem and includes the teacher, the peers, and other resources that live around the game.